welcome to my tutorial video on Reborn Painting. Um, before you get to this point where you're ready to put paint on your doll, you need to make sure that you have washed and dried the doll thoroughly. Um, I recommend using Dawn dish liquid. That's um, a good degreaser and that's what you know that's what you need for your kit because after they're molded they a lot of times have a, a really bad residue um, it's recommended that you wait 24 hours to um, paint your kit but if you just don't have the time or you're in a hurry you can put it in the oven for 20 minutes on about 150 degrees in a convection oven so okay so you're going to need your thinner and we're going to be doing this tutorial with Bountiful Baby um, pre-mix paints. So you're going to need, and if you've purchased the kit, it's not going to come with the crease color. Um, I do recommend getting the crease color, um, but if you if you can't get the crease color or you don't have the money, I can show you how to mix up your own. Um, a lot of people recommend not using this, but and because of the color it's like a dark purple but if you actually know how to use it um, it comes out to the exact color that you need and I'll show you the correct way to use it your kit's going to include your bountiful baby flesh your warm blush your it's going to uh, include eyelid purple brow brown nail tip vein blue lip and nail blush which is just your blushing color and you should have a varnish matte varnish okay you should have an eight piece kit I'm not counting this so I've got two four six eight okay so we're gonna go ahead and start by mixing up some vein blue. I'm going to use, you guys can use your thinner if you don't have any thinning medium. Okay, so um, your thinner will work just the same, but I prefer to use thinning medium because it gives me a thicker consistency. And I'm going to be using this on the inside of the head, okay? And some people, um, they do their veins on top of bare vinyl, but I do not recommend doing that because um, blue will stain your vinyl really bad. Uh, and if you're putting it on bare vinyl, then if you make a mistake, it's going to be one more mask trying to get it off. So what we're doing here is we're going to mix up um, this blue because we're making undertones. And you're going to want to put this mix here behind your eyes, behind the sides of your nose, and if you're doing a real, um, real newborn baby, like I'm doing, you can put some at the sides of the mouth. Um, if you're doing an older infant, you don't want to do this because um, what we're showing here is brand new skin. And older infants have had time um, to get all that blood flow going and everything like it's supposed to be. So they're not going to have this, okay? So this is for a very, very newborn look. And you're just going to want to use a very light amount of blue. And that's going to give you what you're looking for because the blue is extremely pigmented. See, I got a bit much right there. And if you're using your thinning medium, then you want to make sure that you've got about this color right here going in on your head. 
know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but you can locate your eyes. If you can't see them well, you can locate by pressing in and painting where your finger's at. And after you bake this, if you find that it's just not showing through at all, it's too light, you can always re-add it anytime you need to. Okay, I'm going to go into the sides of my nose. It's okay if you can't see this. And then in later steps, we'll also be adding undertones on the outside of our vinyl as well. I got a couple little specks of blue here for my hands. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to mix up our flesh color. And since we're going to be doing this in a large quantity, I wouldn't recommend using well like that. I use just a little saucer. Okay guys, um, make sure that you are using um, the Bountiful Baby Baby Skin and not the Genesis Flush 08. A lot of people will refer to the baby skin as the flesh 08, and it is in fact not. And I'll show you why. As you can see, you got about a five shade difference here. So, make sure you're using the baby skin and not the Genesis paint. Also, make sure your hands are really good and clean. You can use gloves if you prefer. I prefer not to. And if you're vinyl, I'm using the Elizabeth kit, the Real Born Elizabeth. If your kit is a pinkish color or an orangish color or just a color that is something other than this, you're going to need to neutralize it. Um, if your kit's too orange, you're going to want to neutralize it with a very light wash of blue. Um, if it's too peach, you're going to do a light wash of green. And you'll have to accomplish that by mixing colors. I don't think you, you're not going to have anything in your kit to make a green. Um, but, let's see, we got orange, peach, and pink. If your, um, your color's too pink, then you're just going to want to go to the opposite end of the color wheel on that. On um, anything... Anything that your kit's too much of, you're going to want to locate a color wheel. You can look, you can get a free one online, and you're going to want to go to the very end of the color wheel, and you're going to want to do a light wash of that. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Also, you're going to want to, if you're a person that wants to drill out your nose, I can post a video for you to do that. Otherwise, the kits are starting to be made to where the nostrils are not so close to the end of the nose. They're back a little bit. So shading them instead of drilling on them is actually appropriate in that case. But if you've got an odor kit or your nostrils are just... Um, it's apparent that you need to drill them. Um, then you're going to want to do that. Alright, so let's go ahead and mix up our flesh. For some reason, I got a really bad batch of, I guess it's, I guess you would say it's bad. I got a batch of paint here to where I have to add a ton of it to get the color I need. But let's go ahead with our thinner. I've got about a half a plate full here. 
never want to get a good amount of flush. The number one mistake I see beginners making, and I made myself, everybody does, is not enough paint. I mean, it is good to keep your layers thin, because you can always put on more paint rather than take it away. But, you know, you have to have some amount of paint, or, you know, you're never going to get to where you need to be. And I'll show you the two different types of sponges we're going to be using. Actually, we're going to be using three. I'll show you the two that we're going to be using right now and most... <coughs> Excuse me, most often. thin so I need to add some more typically you would only add um, about this much and get a really good mix there but like I said my paint is not doing well right now so I'm having to mix 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 the color I need, excuse me. You're going to want to make sure that you have no clear spots left in your thinner. also going to use a different brush to brush onto your sponge and here's why you the brush that you mix with is going to be very highly pigmented okay so you're going to get too much color so you're going to need to grab another brush and you're going to want to use a peak sponge and here's the difference this is our mottling sponge it's got the holes create the skin pattern that we need and this is a peak sponge okay you create a peak sponge you're going to create a peak sponge by I'll grab these tweezers here guys can use tweezers or you can attempt to do it by hand but your peak sponge is going to be created by pick just pick 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 all over the sponge okay or you can tear the top of your sponge off and it'll look something like this and the reason you want this is to create the little specks on the um, with the paint to make it mimic real skin. Now, mottling sponges, you're gonna do differently. You're gonna take and grab sections. And it's gonna give you these little holes here that are not uniform, okay? And that's gonna be your mottling sponge. It's going to go all around and make sure that you don't have any ends here because you don't want any patterns in your skin. And when you're mottling, always remember to turn your sponge. And we'll do that more later. But, okay, so I've got my, my skin sponge ready to go. I'm using a peak sponge. And so what I'm going to do is always make sure to stir your paint good because it separates 
often. Wipe the excess off of my sponge. Now, I'm going to start by pouncing in the crevices with my paintbrush. Some people prefer to use the ends of the sponge, but it's not going to give you that effect you're looking for. It's just going to give you a flat line. The pouncing method, the pouncing motion is still going to give you those, um, give you that um, prickly skin pigment that you're wanting. And don't worry about trying to stay away from the lips or the fingernails right now because we're going to go back and wipe that off. It's a lot easier than trying to avoid it. So make sure you get inside the ears. Behind them. Anywhere that you don't think your sponge is going to reach with normal pouncing, okay? And it's okay if you forget where you've done. It should still be wet, but if not, it's not going to hurt anything to go over it again. And this um, Elizabeth kit is actually going to be a good starter kit for you. If you're kind of curious on what kit to get to start with. Um, because she is a really easy kit. She does not have a lot of creases. Okay, so now that we've got all of our, um, let me get beside the nose here. I don't think I got beside the nose or the nostrils. Okay, so now that we've got our creases took care of, we're going to go ahead and start pouncing over everything and make sure you pounce over the areas that you've got with your brush already as well because it'll reinforce that effect that we're looking for okay Let's see if you can see that under this light. I don't know if you can see that or not. That pattern. But. And then you're just going to finish uh, going over the entire head. And you're going to want to take um, a spare sponge or whatever you're going to be using to, to wipe off. You're going to want, want to wipe off your lips. Okay, because that does not need a coat of paint, flesh paint. And it's just easier to do this than it is trying to uh, just get the flesh paint all around it. Because what's going to happen is if you do, you're going to um, you're going to end up missing some flesh around your lips. And once the layer's been baked, it's going to be very hard to match it up, if impossible, if not impossible. Okay. Okay. And then you can let your head dry. Now with your limbs, it's going to be the same thing. 
go ahead and stir up your paint. Pencil off any excess. Then you'll take your brush. Get in between all your little piggies. All your cracks and crevices. Anything that you think is too deep for the sponge to catch. As you can see, compared to most other kits, this kit does not hardly have creases. start pouncing with your sponge. Do you get a nice even coat? Don't worry about trying to miss your nails. Like I told you previously. Because what you're gonna do is when you're done you're just gonna go back over and knock those off. Okay. You're just gonna to wanna to cover the rest of your limbs, your arms and your legs, doing them in the same manner as I did the head and this leg, okay? Just wanna make sure you get everything covered. And when you're done, and once the kit has fully dried, when all the shine's gone, if it doesn't look like you have any paint on your limb, in other words, if you have not got your paint thick enough, then you can go ahead and add on another layer before we bake it. There's absolutely no harm in that. Okay? I mean, you can add on 3, 4, 10, 12, 18 layers if you want to, but... Um, no, I'm, I'm joking. You don't need that many layers. But um, there's no harm in adding another layer if you want to. But I don't know if you can... I'm hoping you can see... like baby skin. So, hopefully if yours doesn't look like that, don't stress out. It's no big deal. As long as the coat's smooth and you've got it all over, that's the important part. always 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 before you bake always inspect your pieces make sure you've got everything make sure there's no no areas where you're missing paint make sure there's no areas where you've accidentally got your hands into some blue or some red and you've got a big blob of it on your limb because once that's baked you're not getting it back off Okay, but you can make any changes that you need to before you put it in the oven. Okay. So, go ahead and finish up your limbs. And everything you need to finish up. And then when it's dry, you're going to want to go ahead and 
start with your lips and nails and I like to put I like to have every part of my vinyl covered before it goes into the oven because like I said um, bare vinyl is going to stain very easily so let's go ahead and mix up our first layer of lip color and what we're going to do we're going to add this really thin and we're going to add it in layers don't try to add all your lip color in one layer because it, it's going to look terrible if you do go ahead and grab a mixing brush okay let's put a couple of drops just a couple of drops two maybe three drops of thinner into our well and you're gonna use your bountiful baby color number four lip blush nail paint okay it's this nice burgundy slash red looking color okay and this paint is is pretty pigmented as well so all you're going to need to do is just kind of wet the tip of your brush with it a little bit and if you feel like you've got your paint too dark you can always add a little bit more thinner to it if you feel like it's too light, of course, add a touch more paint. Okay, that's my mixing brush, so it's going over there. And you can use any paintbrush that you feel comfortable with, any paintbrush that you like. I like these little flat brushes here. So let's go ahead and check our paint with a clean brush. And that's about the color you need right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and put a coat of uh, paint on Elizabeth's lips. You're going to remember always to dot off your excess. Your, your paint's gonna run like crazy. <clears throat> now, if you have an open mouth baby, you're gonna want to add a, you're gonna go ahead and mix up some more paint, exactly like this, but you're gonna add a touch of purple, okay? And that's gonna be the inside of your mouth, the color for the inside of your mouth. And you're just going to follow the lip line from the sculpt. And some sculpts can be extremely difficult to tell where the bottom the lip ends. If you're just having a really hard time finding it, you can always resort back to the prototype photo. As you can see, it's not putting too much paint on, 
it's just barely tinging that vinyl red. And if you accidentally mess up, you can always use a bit of thinner and a cotton swab or whatever you're using to wipe off. set that out to dry. Now, once it's dried, you're going to want to have something to blend with. This is going to be your key to reborning, period, is something to blend with. You can use anything from a sponge to one of the sponges you're using to reborn with, to a paintbrush, to a makeup brush, just anything that you like working with that you want to blend with. Anything that you find works best for you. But blending is one of the most important parts of reborning. Okay? If you don't blend out your paint in certain areas, especially the lips, the nails, and your, especially your creases, your, your reborn is not going to look very good. I'm just going to tell you that. And that's that goes back to blending um Um that goes back to checking your kit before you bake it, okay? Now you're also going to put a very light coat of this mixture on your nails. And this will be the only coat of this color that's added to your nails, okay? get lucky and get a kit with big nails because a kit with tiny nails is terrible. Okay, and so you let that dry and then when your entire kit's dried, you're going to want to go back, just check over everything like I told you before, and blend everything out to where your color is um, silky and satiny looking and smooth. Um, you won't have to blend your flesh colors out. Don't worry about that. But you're going to have to blend. I mean, unless you have some flesh that's ran off into your uh, creases that you need to blend out. Um, which I don't ever have issues with that. I'm not sure if others do or not. But um, you're going to want to blend out your lip paint. And just make sure that it's blended out well in those creases. And make sure you've got a nice smooth coat. And don't worry if you can't see it very well. You shouldn't be able to see it very well at this point. Because this is your first coat, okay? So, when your kit's good and dry and you've checked everything, go ahead and stick it in your um, convection oven. The recommended um, setting by Genesis is 200 and... Uh, 65 degrees for eight minutes but you're going to need to use an oven thermometer and base that off of what your oven does okay and if this is the first time you're baking a kit you're probably going to want to stick by it for the whole time okay all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here and I'll see you back here and we'll be ready to start on layer number two till next time bye guys God bless
Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would, please give me a like and share with your friends. I'd also love to have you as, as a subscriber. Have a great day!